Hi, welcome to Unit 5, Day 3. This is Part 2, Kinetics of Chemical Reaction, The Basics. So as you mentioned in Part 1, there are two things that a chemist needs to know in order to understand a chemical reaction. In Part 1, we focus on thermodynamics, which uh, describes the energy that is lost or gained during a chemical reaction. This topic, we're going to focus on kinetics, which is the study of reaction rates, how fast or slow a reaction is. So in this lesson, we're going to examine the five factors that affect the rate of a reaction. Now, a factor is something that influences something else. And these five factors can increase, make faster, or decrease, make slower the rate of a reaction. The faster the reaction, the less time it takes for the reaction to complete. So I just want to show you exactly what I mean by that. Let's say we have... Um, the same reaction, but it's done in three separate trials. So trial A, B, and C. And what I want you to do is looking at the reaction time, which reaction do you think is fastest? Is it reaction A, which takes which is complete in five minutes? Reaction B, which is complete in 16 minutes? Or reaction C, which is complete in two minutes? Of course, it's reaction C, and that's because it has the shortest reaction time. So whatever has the shortest reaction time will be the fastest. Now, we actually know quite a bit about reaction rates. So instead of just going through the five factors that I previously mentioned, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna present you with some scenarios. I'm gonna read the scenarios and give you some choices so you can think about it. Then afterward, we're gonna talk about how do those scenarios relate to reaction rates. The first scenario is pizza pizza. So in this scenario, you are hungry and decide to reheat some leftover pizza in the oven at 375 degrees Fahrenheit. Now you love your pizza in a certain way. You want your crust all crispy and your cheese hot and melted. But it's been five minutes and you open the oven and your pizza is still not ready. What would you do? A, would, um, would you wait? Patience is a virtue. B, do you want it now and take it out and eat it as is? C, are you gonna sacrifice the quality and just go ahead and microwave it? Or D, are you going to crank it up? Are you going to turn up the heat of the oven to 450 degrees Celsius Fahrenheit? Now, if you're like me, you would choose D. You don't want to sacrifice the quality, but you do want it a lot quicker. Um, and so choice D highlights the relationship between increasing temperature and um, heating up the pizza faster. So let's talk about this relationship in terms of reaction rate. So one of the factors that can influence the reaction rate is the temperature. The higher the temperature or the hotter um, it is, the faster the reaction. So if you have a reaction that takes place at, let's say, 10 degrees Celsius and another one that, and the same reaction taking place at 50 degrees Celsius, the one that takes place at 50 degrees Celsius will usually proceed faster. Let's move on to our second scenario, chug it. So you drink a protein shake every morning before your workout. To prepare the shake, you mix two scoops of powder in 16 ounces of almond milk, and you shake it in your blender bottle. But unfortunately today, you lost the little blender ball in your blender bottle, and when you shake it, the, the mixture is still kind of lumpy, and there's powder, um, and it's not well mixed. So what do you do in that case? So are you going to A, shake the bottle faster? B, forget about the whole thing and go to IHOP? C, drink it as is, or D, grab a spoon and do like Bob Marley and stir it up. Now, if you chose choice A or D, you're um, highlighting the relationship between increasing the agitation, which um, examples of that will be shaking, stirring, or mixing, um, and how increasing that agitation will help it dissolve faster. So let's talk about our, our next factor, agitation. The greater the agitation, which is like the more quickly you stir or shake something, or the um, and also how vigorously you're stirring or shaking it, the greater the agitation, the faster the reaction. So that means that if you have a reaction where you you mix it, you mix the particles together, the reactants together, that's going to go faster than if you just let the reaction sit. Here's our third scenario: ice, ice baby. So you and your friends are planning a weekend um, camping trip for the summer and you're responsible for bringing the ice. So you figure you'll bring about five pounds. Now you have an option to buy five pounds of crushed ice, 
five pounds of cubed ice or a five pound block of ice. But the main thing is you wanna make sure the ice lasts the entire weekend. Which one would you choose? Would you choose the crushed ice, the ice cubes, the block, or whatever's the cheapest? If you chose the block, what you're um, noting there is that the smaller pieces, the crushed ice and the cubes, which have more surface area, are gonna melt faster. So let's talk about our next factor, which is surface area. And surface area just basically describes how big or small the pieces are. So in the case of the ice, the smaller pieces, like the crushed or the cubed ice, um, they have a greater surface area. And the greater the surface area, the faster the reaction. And so that's why people will do things like break things apart or crush things up into powder before mixing them, because that's going to increase the rate. All right, here's our last scenario, up and away. So you and your friends are launching Mentos and Coke rockets with goggles on, of course, and a proper adult supervision. Um, and you cautiously add just one Mentos to your soda bottle and you get a disappointing fizz. But you look around, you notice your friend's rockets are launching off quite nicely. What would you do in that case? Would you ask your friends how they did it? Would you forget about the whole thing and eat the rest of the Mentos? Would you add more soda? Or would you add more Mentos? Now, if you said adding more Mentos, you're noting the relationship between increasing the amount of Mentos and making the rocket reaction go faster. So that's the last of the factors we're going to talk about for right now, which is the relationship between concentration or amount and rate. The higher the concentration or amount of reactants you have, the faster the reaction. So these are the four of the five factors that we're talking about right now. The last factor we're gonna review in a moment, but I just wanted to sort of explain why those other factors um, work. Why would those changes lead to a faster reaction? So during a chemical reaction, bonds are broken and new ones are formed. And according to collision theory, the molecules must collide into one another in order for that to happen. But not all collisions are gonna to lead to the desired product. In order for the collisions to lead to the desired product, they must meet one of the meet both of the following criteria. They must have sufficient kinetic energy, and they must collide in the correct orientation. So, what do I mean by sufficient kinetic energy? That means they must move fast enough. So, oops, let's go back. So, let's say, for example, um, we have carbon monoxide and oxygen molecules colliding together. These two collided pretty slowly and they're moving too slow. So thus they don't have enough kinetic energy. So this collision will not lead to a reaction. However, this collision where they're moving a lot quick, a lot more quickly, they have enough energy and that's gonna to lead to a reaction. So the carbon monoxide and the oxygen are gonna produce the carbon dioxide, CO2, and the oxygen as shown in the reaction above. So they must first have sufficient kinetic energy. The other thing is they must collide with the proper orientation. So what do I mean by that? Let's say we take this collision here. Notice how in this collision, the oxygen in the carbon monoxide is colliding with the oxygen in the O2. Well, in this reaction, if the oxygen atom in the CO collides with the oxygen atom in the O2, there's not going to be a reaction, even if there's enough kinetic energy, because the orientation isn't right. However, in this collision, where it's sort of flipped, the carbon in the carbon monoxide collides with the oxygen in the O2, and that is the correct orientation. So if they collide in this fashion, provided there's enough kinetic energy, the reaction will take place. So how does that relate to the factors that we saw before? Well, those factors that we saw before, like increasing the temperature, increasing concentration, et cetera, can change the amount of kinetic energy and the likelihood that the particles collide with the correct orientation. So temperature, increasing the temperature and increasing the agitation increases the kinetic energy of the particles. You're making them move faster. And so therefore, the rate of the reaction um, is going to increase because you're going to have more particles with the right kinetic energy. Um, increasing any of the other factors, so increasing concentration, temperature, surface area, and agitation, all of that increases the frequency of collisions. The more collisions that you have happening at, a, at um, any given time, that's gonna increase the chances that the collisions have the correct orientation. And so therefore the rate will be, um, will increase as well. 
So the main thing is that those factors that we look at are either going to increase the kinetic energy and or increase the chances that the molecules collide with proper orientation. Now, we're talking about this idea that they have to have sufficient kinetic reactions, have to have sufficient kinetic energy and the correct orientation in order for them to proceed. And that varies from reaction to reaction. And the way we can sort of quantify this is through what's called the activation energy. The activation energy is the difference in the energy between the reactant and the top of the hill in the reaction profile. So remember the reaction profiles are these charts here. So essentially, it's the energy required to go from where you're starting the reactants to the top of that hill, getting over that hump. So we measure it from wherever the reactant is to the top of the hill. So this energy will be the activation energy. And we did see the same thing for an endothermic reaction, so from the reactant to the top of the hill. Now, remember from before, we saw in part one how to use the reaction profile to turn, calculate delta H, the change in enthalpy, which sort of is like the amount of heat lost or gain. Um, so it's important to note the difference. So from, for activation energy, it's from the reactant to the top of the hill, and from delta, for delta H, it's between the reactants and the product. Oh, and one last thing, the greater the active, the activation energy, the slower the reaction. So the higher that activation energy value, the slower the reaction will be. So let's try a couple of CFUs. So here we have the reaction energy profile for um, combustion of butane. I want you to use the information in the profile to calculate the activation energy. Pause the video now when you press play again, the answer will be revealed. Okay, so remember to get the activation energy, it's the uh, energy difference between from the reactant to the top of the hill. So the reactant is at 34 kilojoules. The top of the hill is at 70 kilojoules. We would just subtract those two. Um, and it's important to note that this activation energy will always be positive. So if you did 34 minus 70 and you got negative 36, just make that value positive. Here's our next CFU. I want you to compare the reaction profiles for the combustion of butane and methane, shown here, and use the profiles to determine which one is faster and explain. Pause the video now. When you press play again, the answer will be revealed. Okay, the answer to that is um, methane. And the reason why it's methane is because uh, methane has a smaller activation energy. So if you compare these two activation energy, methane is smaller. And so that means it has to be a fast, it's a faster reaction. Okay, so we looked at these four, four or five factors. There's one more, of course, we need to talk about, and that is what is the fifth factor? Um, and that fifth factor is called catalyst or enzyme. So adding a catalyst will speed up the reaction. Well, what is a catalyst? A catalyst is a chemical that you add to a reaction to make it faster. Um, and in biology, catalysts are known as enzymes. So an example, amylase, which is an enzyme in your saliva that breaks down starches, that's a catalyst. It's not a reactant or product. It's something that you add to a reaction. And it works by lowering the activation energy. So thus, it's going to make the reaction faster. So if you look at this profile here, the blue profile represents the reaction without the catalyst. And then the red profile represents the same reaction when you add catalyst. Notice how the activation energy is smaller for the red profile. So the important thing to note for this um, lesson is you need to know the five factors that affect reaction rates and how they affect it. So if you so for concentration, for example, the higher the concentration, the faster the rate. Let's do a last couple of CFUs um, and then that will be it. So which reaction would be faster? You have this reaction here with zinc and iodine using the chunks of zinc or the broken down mossy zinc and explain. The answer will be mossy zinc because it has a higher surface area, smaller pieces, so that's going to be faster. Next one, which one will be faster, using 15 milliliters of bleach or 5 milliliters of bleach for this reaction? 15, that's because you're using a higher concentration, so it'll be a greater amount. Which one will be faster, cooking eggs on a high or a low temperature? Of course, it'll be at the high temperature because the higher the temperature, the faster the reaction. And finally, which one will be faster, breaking out of starch in water or in your mouth? It's in your mouth because you have a 